Hi guys, welcome back to Saving Salvage, welcome back to the channel and as you can see in today's video guys we are back on the Polo GTI at long last. I'm in the process of getting the RS4 out the workshop so we can finish off the Polo but in today's video the, uh, the workshop won't be required or for at least this part of the video it won't anyway because we will be fitting the interior for the Polo GTI. So, as always guys if you do enjoy these videos please do like and subscribe and i'm just going to walk over here because i don't know where the wind is and i know my camera's crap in the wind if you do enjoy these videos please do like and subscribe and if you haven't already please do head over to my instagram which is saving underscore salvage right time to reveal which i've actually had for about i don't know two months maybe even more than that the interior i bought for my polo gti sat just the other side of the car so here she is, she's been parked up for a while and as you can see, well overdue a clean. Um, I can't remember how the last time you saw this car, but the front bumper has all been done. Um, it's all ready to go. I've got two tyres to fit on the front, so we'll be doing that in today's video as well. And it just, it was actually really nice and clean when I left it, but obviously dirt, dust, leaves, etc. have just got it really dirty. So, and the interior is a little bit minging now as well. But onto the interior. Now, some of you are gonna, it's gonna split opinions, I think. Some of you are gonna go, yeah, okay, understand that. And others are gonna go, oh no, you shouldn't have done that. You should have got this type of interior. However, it was the best option for what was available to me at the time. And that is these. This is the half leather optional extra seats for the Polo GTI and no they are not the tartan bucket seats um, I just couldn't find any um, and the ones I could find people just wanted way too much money they wanted nearly 900 pound for a set of Polo GTI seats so just way too much money and also they were all in three door as well could not find any tartan five door seats whatsoever but these popped up um, fairly local they are the optional extra um, upgraded seats, well you say upgraded, they're that half leather, half Alcantara seats for the Polo GTI and more, most importantly they are the five door seats as well. So the reason these work well with this car is because it could have left the factory with those exact seats in. That is the whole point, they're not a three door, they are for this car. So that is the reason I got them and also the price they were. I think. I'm going to struggle. They began with a three. They have a 300 or 350. I can't remember, but again, well under half the price of what people were asking for a three-door uh, tartan interior. So I'm happy with those, and they're in really good condition as well, and they've come out of a low mileage car. So we are going to fit the seats in today's video. So got my makeshift tyres. They are not very supportive, and they move when you accelerate, so they are no good. So they're coming out. And as you can see, I've got the other parts of the seat there. So let's crack on with today's video and we'll start with the driver's seat. Useless. So the interior is all now fitted, that went in a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Fits like a glove as you'd expect it to. Obviously it needs a clean which we're going to do next but it looks so much better, it looks like a proper car again. The only thing I haven't been able to do is just fit this, um, this section of the rear bench here because the only bolt that I didn't have was the bolt for this seat belt which bolts, you can see it there, look it's flapping around, bolts there go, you can see it there. Look. So I, ha I haven't found that bolt, that bolt is missing, so I haven't fitted this. Um, because it's quite a, uh, a special bolt and it's obviously to, to do with safety, I'm going to order one from Volkswagen and that will hopefully be here in the next few days, so I won't need to film that. But everything else is all in, albeit dirty. Uh, seats are all in, fitted nicely and perfect. So that is the interior done, bar clean. So now what we're going to do is move on to, I think, what we're going to do actually absolutely filthy look if you look at the bonnet she is all nice and clean now just giving it a quick wash looks a lot better 
um, and now you can see that how nice the front bumper looks absolutely perfect now so that's good so going to jump onto the inside uh, first thing we've got to do is clear the airbag light because obviously that's still on because of the seats but now they're all plugged in it should just be a case of plugging the computer on clearing the code and then that is done so let's jump in and have a look nothing's ever simple is it so as you can see I went to clear the codes on the airbag side of things which should have been a straightforward procedure because obviously now they're all plugged in I was just going to clear the codes job done uh, however I was getting a seat belt not seatbelt sorry a passenger occupancy sensor fault um, and that is purely the sensor to tell you when there's a passenger um, sat there so then they need to wear the seat belt so it blings up on the dash so um, on this seat here we just had the two airbag connectors which was the main yellow one which you can see there and the green one so on this side we have the same two wires here but we have the additional wire here which is for passenger occupancy um, obviously all these three were plugged in um, so I, I couldn't work out why it was basically showing an open circuit which basically means it's not plugged in and obviously you can get some um, faults with the plugs the connectors themselves they stay stop working they become no good and you replace the plugs and that can solve a lot of airbag problems however these were in fine condition I've checked them both they were nothing wrong with them I wiggled them loads it just kept coming back open circuit so got a bit confused and as you can see I've ended up taking out the seat so we've got the seat here here's the connector uh, I've tried to trace it and see what happened it goes into here and under the seat I've ch um, traced the wire into the car there's no problems with that that is all in a sealed you um, a wiring harness so there's gonna be no problems with that at all um, so I then took to Google good old Google and did some research and after about half an hour of research I have found the problem so there is a split in years so as you know you get a 6R polo and a 6C and they are as far as I'm aware I'm not 100% so I don't want to give you false information but I'm pretty sure uh, they are the same model but one's a facelift um, so you've got a 6C which I believe is like 2011 to 2000 and I don't know so I'm not going to say it but and then you've got the 6R which is what mine is and after doing some research I found that the passenger occupancy sensor in the seat changes between a 6R and a 6C I have no idea why but they are not interchangeable so they are different sensors and that is why I'm getting an open circuit fault because it can't communicate with the sensor because it's different and I've had a look and this seat is from a um, pre-facelift uh, 6C so it's, I think, it, I, don't, I, don't, I don't, I don't, I mean, it says February 2011, the seat here, and obviously my cars are 2016. So this is obviously going to have the wrong sensor, which is why it doesn't work. So we've solved the problem, albeit very annoying one and completely unnecessary. I don't know why they've changed it, but there it, there it goes. So I have managed just to order one. There's only one left in the country, um, which I've ordered. Uh, 40 quid, so modest is obviously not ideal but it's a lot less than it could have been um, that does mean however we are now going to have to dismantle the seat to change this sensor wire over which isn't ideal but there we go can't do anything about it it's got to be done for it to work properly so um, I'm going to strip that seat when the, uh, when the sensor turns up so we're going to leave that for now Right, so fast forward another few days and the wheels have all now been perfectly refurbished so they are all spot on, beautiful. And I also, it made no sense for me fitting the tyres because the, um, the wheel refurber had to remove the tyres to do the wheels. So I just gave them my two new tyres here, look. Um, so they just 
fitted the two new tyres instead of putting the old ones back on. So we have effectively had four wheels refurbed, two new tyres fitted on the front. I also have my parts, I'll show you in a minute. I've got my side skirt here which we're going to replace um, and I've got my anchor, rear anchor bolt for the seat belt. And I've also got my seat occupancy sensor here. As you can see, look, it's in there. Don't want to damage it. I have already plugged it in because I thought I ain't going to mess around, um, obviously dismantling the seat for it then to still not work. So what I've done is, as you can see, I've just plugged it in and I have just quickly checked the codes, cleared them, reread them and the code has gone so I no longer have a occupancy sensor fault I have obviously just got the main airbag fault which is the yellow one there so happy with that that's all good so that is now fixed the problem so now what we've got to do is remove the old sensor in the seat and fit this one and I have no idea how to do it so this will be fun so got my seat uh, upside down on the stand this is the wire that we are replacing it goes into the back of the seat here um, I haven't looked up I have Elsa for Volkswagen, but unfortunately it is in German, so it doesn't really help me at all on this one. So I'm just going to guess. I've already just folded back this uh, seat cover bit here. So I'm hoping, because it's actually a really thin sensor, um, it's literally that, look, it's a pad, pretty much. So I'm hoping um, that it sits... Uh, sort of in my I don't really know it can't be too close to the base because otherwise the sensor is not going to work it's not really going to know so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off these trims here I'm going to take off the back rest which is only uh, one bolt each side and then I'm just going to fold the seat cover away and then hopefully we should find it pretty easily and get it swapped out so I'm going to put it on time lapse any problems I do have um, and I'm not doing it the way I've just described I will cut in and show you So as you can see, I've had to completely strip the seat to get to this sensor. So um, it was backrest off, which meant all the side trims off, which was a pain in the ass. That took about 20 minutes just to get the one trim off. Um, and then to get the seat cover off, uh, had to completely take the seat cover off because it's held in with four uh, hooks in each corner. So I had to completely remove the cover. And this has actually got heated seats, this, um, this car, but I don't think the Polo has. So. It's an option uh, for the future owner if they wanted to. But here is the sensor look under the heated mat and it is just stuck on here look. So just pretty, pretty minor stick. So there is our sensor. So that is what we are swapping out. So that is us halfway there. So sensor goes into the back here. So I'm going to swap that out now, uh, put the new one in and then have to rebuild the seat again. So there we go, got the, the new one side by side. Why they've changed this and why they've made it so difficult for it to work, I do not know. Um, they look pretty much identical apart from this. Uh, the old one has three pads here, as you can see, and the new one only has two. That is pretty much the only difference I can see, obviously bar the part number. The old one is 6RO and the new one is 6CO. So no idea why, but there we go. So gonna change them out now it luckily it comes with sticky pads so we can stick it all back down it's like it's factory um, this heated seat bit was actually already up so I'm just gonna put a little although it doesn't not gonna make any difference because I don't have heated seats but I'm just gonna put a line of glue along here just to make sure it stays stuck down so I'm gonna fit this now and rebuild the seat so there we go look there's the new sensor all in position all stuck back down with its pads and all in position here look using the original routing of the old one i've got a little bit of glue here look so i'm just going to glue the heated seat back down here and here and also just going to run a strip down this side here so it's all in position and not flapping around like that
So here's the seat, all completely back together now, all trims on properly. And as you can see, all fabric now in position just needs a bit of a hoover, but all back together. So we're now gonna send it back over to the car, fit it back in the car, and hopefully that will be our airbag light off. Driver's seat, passenger seat, all in, rear bench in. Uh, I've just put the bolt for the seat belt in, so I've now fitted this rear bench properly. So that is the rear bench all in position. And I've just gone to the computer, cleared the codes, and yoo-hoo! We have no airbag light, so we are all good. Don't worry, my little triangle warning light is for washer fluid. So we are all 100% interior completely done now. Um, wheels done, tires fitted. Um, what else? I think that's pretty much it. So, what we've got left to do is a side square. And, um, what else? Is that it? I've checked all the other codes, by the way. There's no other codes. Side skirt and MOT and road test. So, I'm just going to step inside. So yeah, all we've got left to do is MOT, road test, fit the side skirt in the exact reverse order I've just said it in. But that is it for today's video, guys. Um, it's actually taken a lot longer. Mainly that seat was a bit of a pain in the ass. Uh, so I've run out of time for today, so that will be it for today's video. So in the next video, we'll be on the Polo GTI, and that should be the last video on it. Um, and in that video, we'll be fitting that side skirt, um, taking it for a road test and getting it booked in for MOT. That should pass nicely and then it should go on to its new owner. So as always guys, thank you very much uh, for watching. And if you do enjoy these videos, please do remember to like and subscribe. Um, and then once we have done the polo, we're gonna be getting on to another one of the cars I've got waiting in the wings. So as always guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers guys.